Welcome back. My name is Anand. You're watching Young Physicist. Have you ever wondered how James Clerk Maxwell concluded that the light is an electromagnetic wave? To understand that, we need to have a knowledge of Maxwell's equation. You know, Maxwell's equations are basically the set of four equations. Uh, these equations are the foundation of classical electrodynamics and the optics. Maxwell's equations were not formulated by James Clerk Maxwell by himself. They existed long before Maxwell came. But why? Then why we call these equations to be Maxwell's equation? Because Maxwell made a very important and significant contribution in one of the equation. Let me discuss these equations one by one and then I'll discuss what was the contribution of James Clerk Maxwell. The first equation is what we call the surface integral of electric field over a closed surface is always is equal to Q upon epsilon naught where Q is the charge epsilon naught is the permittivity of the free space. This equation says the flux electric flux through any closed surface is always equal to the charge enclosed by the surface divided by epsilon naught. What does flux means the electric flux uh, is the number of electric lines of force going through the surface or coming out of the surface perpendicular to the surface right so number of electric lines of force going or coming out of the surface is known as flux that flux directly depends upon the charge enclosed by the surface this equation is known as Gauss law in electricity this equation allows you to calculate the electric field by any distribution of charge. Okay, if you have any distribution of charge and if you want to calculate the electric field at any point, then this equation allows you to calculate the electric field. The second equation is Gauss law in magnetism. This equation says the surface integral of magnetic field over a closed surface is always equal to zero what does it mean the magnetic flux over a closed surface is always equal to zero because the number of uh, magnetic lines of force going inside the surface is exactly equal to the number of magnetic lines of force coming out of the surface so the net flux is zero this equation is based upon the fact that the magnetic monopole doesn't exist in the nature if you want to have an uh, electric charge, you can have individual electric charge, uh, individual uh, positive charge, individual negative charge. But if you want to have a magnet, you have to have the magnet of South Pole as well as North Pole. You can't have the South Pole separately and North Pole separately because the nature doesn't allow magnet to exist uh, in a monopole situation or monopole state. The third equation is what we call Faraday's electromagnetic induction. This law says if you uh, change the magnetic flux with respect to time or the change in magnetic flux with respect to time, right? So phi of B uh, denotes the magnetic flux. If this gets changed with respect to time, then there is production of EMF, right? There is production of EMF and EMF is written as the line integral of electric field over a closed loop right so the change in magnetic flux with respect to time induces the emf and that emf is what we call the induced emf there is a negative sign here this negative sign is a consequence of lenz law this says the induced emf will be in such a way that it will always oppose the change in magnetic flux this is, the uh, this is Mike, uh, Michael Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. Fourth one is what we call Ampere's circuital law. This equation says the line integral of magnetic field over a closed loop. Line integral of magnetic field over a closed loop is exactly equal to mu naught into current or I. Mu naught is what we call permeability of the free space or the magnetic constant of the free space right this equation uh, allows you to calculate the magnetic field by current okay if you have 
uh, current carrying circuit then you can calculate the magnetic field uh, the set of four equations these equations are not called Maxwell's equation uh, if uh, we made some modification in the fourth equation then after modification these equations are called Maxwell's equation okay let me consider a situation where a capacitor is connected with a DC supply right if the capacitor is uh, not fully charged then there will be current in the circuit if the uh, capacitor is fully charged then the potential of the capacitor becomes exactly equal to the uh, potential of the battery so the current in the circuit will stop as long as the capacitor is not fully charged there will be current in the circuit from positive terminal of the battery to the negative terminal right as there is current we can calculate the magnetic field using Ampere's circuital law let's consider a point P which is at a distance of R from the wire so R is the perpendicular distance of the observation point P from the wire let me calculate magnetic field at this point to calculate the magnetic field at this point we make a loop here we call it Ampere's loop it will be a circular loop of radius R okay now the magnetic field the direction of magnetic field at this P point can be uh, can be determined uh, by using a uh, right hand rule okay so the direction of the magnetic field will be this outward outward direction magnetic field will be in the outward direction and the perpendicular to this board okay so the magnetic field will be in this direction we can calculate the magnetic field using Ampere's circuital law okay so apply the Ampere's circuital law here the line integral of magnetic field over a closed loop is always equal to mu naught into I okay now the direction of this magnetic field and the, this length element both are in same direction so the cause of uh, cause of theta is 1 because the angle between the magnetic field and line element is 0 degree so I can write integral over a closed loop B DL is equal to mu naught into I because the cause of 0 is 1 now the magnitude of magnetic field at every point on this loop is equal uh, is same is constant that's why I can take B out of the integral sine of integral so I can write DL is equal to mu naught I so B into this integration of DL over a closed loop is, uh, the, is the circumference of the loop that is 2 pi R 2 pi R is equal to mu naught into I so the magnetic field becomes equal to mu naught I divided by 2 pi R so there is a magnetic field a left side to the capacitor and this is equal to mu naught I upon 2 pi R now we can calculate the magnetic field a right side to the capacitor let me consider a point Q which is at a distance of R from the wire again the distance I'm taking same okay and I can make a loop here loop of radius small r now I can apply Ampere's circuital law again to calculate the magnetic field at point Q again Ampere's circuital law is the line integral of magnetic field over a closed loop is, is equal to mu naught i as the current same current is same the radius of the loop is same then obviously the magnetic field will be exactly equal to mu naught i upon 2 pi r same magnetic field at point p okay now let me consider another point r which is the point is in between the plates of the capacitor this r point is at a distance of small r from the wire okay now again in order to calculate the magnetic field at point r i can make a loop of radius r in between the plates of the capacitor now i can apply the uh, ampere's circuital law to calculate the magnetic field at point r so again applying Ampere's circuital law 
to calculate the magnetic field at point R. Okay. So again, the magnetic field, if there is magnetic field, then the direction of magnetic field and the length element would be same. So the cos of 0 is 1. I can write the line integral of a magnetic field is equal to mu naught. Okay. The current as you can see there is no current in between the plates of the capacitor there is no current so current has to be zero okay if current is zero then definitely the magnetic field is going to be zero okay now see if we apply ampere circuital law then we are able to calculate the magnetic field at point p at point q but magnetic field at point r is zero it means according to ampere circuital law there is no mag magnetic field in between the plates of the capacitor. This uh, thing or this statement did not satisfy James Clerk Maxwell. James Clerk Maxwell was not satisfied by this uh, statement or this fact which is coming out from Ampere's circuital law. He thought that this fact is violating the law of conservation of electric charge. Now see, in at point P, there is magnetic field because of the current or motion of the charged particles. At point Q, there is exactly same magnetic field, okay, because of the motion of charged particle. So it, it is something like the charged particle is going towards the capacitor, okay, and it between the capacitor, the charged particles are being disappeared, and right type, right side to the capacitor, again the charged particles are being are being appeared. Okay, so this is something that that is violating the law of conservation of electric charge because we believe that the charge is conserved. Now this thing is violating the law of conservation of electric charge. So James Clerk Maxwell argued that there has to be some magnetic field in between the plates and the, the magnitude of that magnetic field will be exactly equal to the magnitude of uh, magnetic field, magnitude of the magnetic field at point P and Q. He argued that there has to be magnetic field in between the plates. Now it's for sure that in between the plates there is no current. Then that magnetic field cannot be, uh, cannot be there because of the current because current is zero. There has to be some other source of magnetic field in between the plates. Now this capacitor is being charged by this battery. During the charging of the capacitor the a charge on the on each capacitor will increase so increase in charge will uh, will change the electric field in between the plates of the capacitor the source of magnetic field in between the plates of the capacitor is the change in electric field or electric flux so he argued that the line integral of magnetic field over a closed loop is directly proportional to rate of change of electric flux in between the plates now we can calculate the magnetic field the line integral of magnetic field over a closed loop is equal to some constant sine of constant of proportionality d of dt of phi of e phi of e is uh, electric flux right now we can determine this constant by the fact that the Magnetic field at point R is exactly equal to the magnetic field at point P and Q. Okay. Now, the magnetic field B, D of L, again the same logic here, cos of 0 is 1. So, uh, this is equal to K, D upon DT of phi of E. Now, I can take B, magnetic field, outside the sign of integral, that is DL is equal to K d upon dt of phi of e okay i can put the value of magnetic field from uh, this this equation we already know the value of b which is equal to mu naught i upon 2 pi r into the integration of dl over a closed loop is exactly equal to 2 pi r because integration is being along the loop so k d upon dt of phi of e 2 pi r got cancelled with 2 pi r, you are left with mu naught i is equal to k d upon dt of electric flux is electric field multiplied by area, capital A, right? 
and this capital A is the area of the the plates of capacitor okay now I can further write that mu naught I is equal to K times T upon DT of we know the electric field due to the parallel plate capacitor which is equal to Q upon area epsilon naught into area 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 got cancelled mu naught I is equal to K times of D by DT of Q 1 upon epsilon naught okay now D upon DT of Q is current so this is current this is current these got cancelled mu naught epsilon naught is equal to K now we successfully calculated the value of this constant then the line integral of magnetic field becomes the line integral of magnetic field over a closed loop is, is equal to mu naught epsilon naught the value of k mu naught epsilon naught into d upon dt of pi of e that is electric flux so this was the contribution of james clark maxwell right so it uh, the source of magnetic field is not always the current if there is change in electric flux or electric field then obviously there is generation of magnetic field if uh, there is a point in space where there is current as well as the change in electric field then the line integral of magnetic field at that point the line integral of electric field at that point over a closed loop can be written as mu naught i which is ampere's law plus mu naught epsilon naught d upon dt of pi of e so this is the term contributed by jim clark maxwell so this equation together is called ampere maxwell law okay this can be written as the line integral of magnetic field is equal to i can take mu naught common so i plus epsilon naught d upon dt of phi of e obviously that this term this term will have the dimension of current because both the physical same physical quantities are always added or subtracted okay so this term will have the units or dimensions of current so this term was called displacement current displacement current so it has nothing to do with the current this term has nothing to do with the current just because it has got the dimension of current James Clark Maxwell called this the displacement current current so this equation can also be written as mu naught I upon I D where I D is displacement current and it is given by I D is equal to epsilon naught D upon DT of phi of E that is the electric flux after modification in the fourth equation these set of equations are called Maxwell's equations James Clark Maxwell used uh, these equations to prove that the light is an electromagnetic wave that I will post in my next video how James Clark Maxwell was able to conclude that the light is an electromagnetic wave stay connected with me and subscribe the channel young physicist thank you very much